All right, and now on to learning to impression. So recently I decided to start learning impressioning. I've had some successes and some failures. I thought I would share just a quick, quick synopsis of what my experience has been, as well as some resources that I used to help get started, just in case you're interested in learning as well. It's really quite fun uh, process to go through. Anyway, I have successfully impressioned four padlocks based on the Schlage keyway, because that's what key blanks I have at the moment. My first attempt was on an Abus 8345. However, that one was a complete failure. Why? Because I forgot to make sure it was a five pin lock before trying to impression with a five pin blank. Yeah, I'm that smart. <laughs> and the re that resulted in uh, two ruined blanks before I remembered to check the number of pins. Anyway, my second attempt resulted in a successful impression of an AB, Abus 8355. Uh, the third attempt on an Almont rekey was even easier and faster. The fourth, another Abus, was successful, but I almost broke that key. It is slightly twisted at the shoulder, so it will have to be redone before I actually have a usable key on that one. The fifth was quite an eye-opener for me and, and quite a learning opportunity. It was my second Almont rekey. Uh, it was leaving very, very light marks at times. I ruined the first blank by being too aggressive with my filing, and I overshot a depth, and you can't really recover from that. The second blank snapped because I was being too heavy-handed trying to get a good mark I could see. So I used that key, filed a third blank to match that one, but just slightly shallower on the cuts, and started over and was finally able to successfully impression the lock. Um, so that's a quick summary of my journey so far. So I thought I would share some useful resources for any of you that might be interested. First off, on the Tool Australia website, we have a blog post called Impressioning Tools for Beginners by Error Buffer Overflow. The first little section I will read here is kind of a teaser for you to go over and check it out over there says, one of the things that inadvertently always comes up when talking about impressioning is tools. Honestly, I struggled with this part of getting started with impressioning, and in my own experience speaking to other people, it can be one of the most significant bar barriers to entry. I won't be talking about the best tool or all the tools you will need, but rather what tools I have found useful, and where I can, I will provide links and references to where you can buy them. So I recommend you go check out the article. Some of the tools they cover are files, light and magnifying glasses, toothbrush, spacing guides, calipers, and gaffer tape. Really a good resource for getting started. The next article is one that I shared last week called About Impressioning Handles DIY. A really useful article if you're thinking about making your own impressioning handle to save a little money. I personally used vice grips. They work, but I do find that there is a tendency to twist a little sideways and it makes it easy to snap or bend the key blank. So something to keep in mind if you're going to try and do it with vice grips, be very, very careful about how you're applying the tension. As far as technique, ways to learn technique, I found this video by Kokomo Lock, impressioning a forward ignition lock. Does a really, really good job of showing the marks very clearly that a pin tumbler lock will leave. So I recommend you watch that if you're at all interested in impressioning pin tumbler locks. Videos that actually helped me a lot were the videos by Rubber Band. So first we have the Lock Pickers United impressioning tutorial that Rubber Band did. In the description to that reads, in this video, Rubber Band shows us the art of impressioning, a skill that requires patience, attention to detail, and a little bit of time. Rubber Band does an excellent job of explaining the process, but even more so. What got me interested in impressioning and what gave me a lot of the tips that I used to get my first successful open was Rubber Band's live stream. He did an impressioning live stream. You can find it on his channel. Link will be in the show notes. The description of that reads, a long-winded video of me dragging a file across a key blank in hopes it does something eventually. Sometimes it does. One time it didn't. It's a very good look at what impressioning is really like. He's doing it real time on a live stream. He has a success. He has a failure. It's a great way to learn. A lot of tips he gives along the way as he's talking through what he's doing and answering questions for the live chat. So I really recommend watching that if you're interested in impressioning. 
Another video that just came out was Lockwood 232 Padlock Impressioned by Tepene. It says, I've just started my journey down the impressioning road, so I thought a little four pinner Lockwood 232 might be a good place to start. After one abandoned effort, I got a working key on my second attempt. It says, My takeaway from this is that removing too much metal results in a failure you can't recover from, and that is an excellent lesson. I'm pretty sure that most people who have ever attempted to do impression have made this mistake. You take a little too much metal off and you're done. Um, you may not realize you're done at first, but you're done. You, you're not going to get an open. Anyway, good idea to just go really, really slow a little bit at a time, especially if you don't have a gauge to judge what the depth cuts are for your particular brand of lock and key that you're working on. Slow and steady wins the race. I will provide links in the show notes for the uh, handle that Rubber Band uses. Uh, you can find that at digbylockandtool.com. Link in the show notes. I will provide a link for the file that I use, which is uh, from hooligankeys.com, Rubber Band's site. I bought it from him. It's a great file for impressioning. Uh, the magnification headband that I use, being able to see the marks is absolutely key to getting. A working key. Uh, uh, pun not intended there. Anyway, it's absolutely a must that you see the marks clearly. If your eyes are as bad as mine are up close, you're going to need something to help you see. The magnification headband is really, really useful for me. It has multiple different ways, uh, levels of magnification you can get to. And also, uh, you don't have to take your hand off to pick up a magnifying glass. You don't have to have, have, to have a desk to sit at. So really, really useful. I think it's a good idea. 